Hello, everybody. This is Cody Daniel with the Corinth Library, part of the Northeast Regional Library System. Today, we're going to be reading The Library Fish, written by Alyssa Satin Capacilli, illustrated by Gladys Jose, and read with permission from Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Once there was a fish. She was not an ordinary fish. She didn't live in the sea or the ocean. She didn't live in a river or lake. In fact, when Mr. Hughes, the librarian, found her, he said, I'm not quite sure where you came from, but if you love stories, you've come to the right place. Some libraries have their lions, but this library will have you, fish. Hard as it might be to believe, Mr. Hughes was sure the fish wiggled her tail. She may have even smiled. From that day on, she was known as Library Fish. She made her home on the desk of Mr. Hughes. It was the perfect place to welcome all the visitors to the library. From where she sat, Library Fish could check each book that was borrowed and returned. Library Fish quickly grew to love story time. Mr. Hughes read stories that made her laugh out loud. He read poems that filled her with wonder. Mr. Hughes read in a bold voice. He read in a whisper. Library Fish met characters who were brave and kind, while others were daring, shy, or inventive. Library Fish learned about distant planets she might visit one day. Of course, Library Fish enjoyed an outing, too. She loved days spent on the bookmobile. Winding through busy streets, Library Fish could feel the excitement of the crowd awaiting their arrival. I want an adventure. Poetry, please. I need a long book for the road. Any books about puppies? What's the latest in the Wizzy Wizard series? Libros en Espanol, por favor. I, need, I think meerkats are cool. I'm just learning to read. Are there any new graphic novels? Everyone was excited. Mr. Hughes made sure everyone found just the right book. He always chose something wonderful to read aloud, too. Hard as it might be to believe, Library Fish was certain the bookmobile enjoyed a good story as much as she did. She could feel his engine rumble with joy. One morning, Library Fish awoke bright and early. She waited for Mr. Hughes to arrive with his usual good morning, Library Fish. She waited and waited, but the library doors remained closed. Where could Mr. Hughes be? Library Fish looked out over the shelves. Every book sat patiently in its place. She looked out of the long windows. Could it be? There, for as far as she could see, was snow, thick snow falling faster and harder than Library Fish had ever seen before. It reminded her of a story Mr. Hughes read, where snow fell so high and wide it made busy city streets come to a stop. Could snow make the library come to a stop, too? Library fish swam around her bowl. She hummed a tune. She did some fancy spins. The snow kept falling. The library grew quieter and quieter. There was only one thing to do. The library may be closed on the outside, said library fish, but it's always open on the inside. There's a story waiting for me. I just have to find it. Library fish jumped, she leaped, she wiggled. She didn't get far at all, hmm, she said. Library fish remembered the story of a magic beanstalk. She reached and stretched. She climbed to the tip top of her bowl until she slid down with a plop. Ah, she sighed. Maybe I can fly up, up, and away like a superhero, said library fish. The thing was, she didn't have a cape. Library fish looked out of her bowl. The moon peeked through the snowfall. That's it, said library fish. If a rocket ship can soar to the moon, maybe I can. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off, she shouted. And with one big splash, library fish landed safely at the foot of a towering stack of books. Filled with all the possibility of a great story, she set off at once. Library Fish looked over the book cart. Some of the books were too high to reach. Some were too heavy. Library Fish went up and down the aisles. She passed shelf after shelf until she found just 
what she was looking for. There in the storytime corner were plenty of books ready for reading. Library Fish settled into a comfortable, cozy spot. She opened cover after cover. She turned page after page. She poured over wonderful illustrations. And before long, something extraordinary happened. Library Fish was just about to reach for one more story when she heard it. First, a beep, and then a honk, and then a vroom, vroom. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Library Fish said with a giggle. I'm not the only one around here who loves a good story. Library Fish chose some of her very favorite books, and although it had already been a night filled with adventures, she was sure there was time for just a few more. Library Fish read in a bold voice. She read in a whisper. She read until she laughed out loud. She read until she felt the bookmobile's engine rumble with joy. And before long, something extraordinary happened again. Whoosh! She went under the sea, through outer space, and right through the sky. When the first rays of sun began to shine, a very tired library fish climbed back into her bowl. She dreamed wonderful dreams until... Good morning, library fish, said Mr. Hughes. Are you ready to welcome our visitors? She was ready indeed. Library fish smiled. She wiggled her tail. Hard as it might be to believe, Mr. Hughes was sure library fish yawned too. Oh, library fish, I missed you, library fish. Hmm, Mr. Hughes is just not sure what has happened. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Come back tomorrow for another fun story.